Good evening, namaskar, and happy Christmas to all of you. And many blessings to you from all of us here. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. We had a lovely one here with many friends and family members joining yesterday. I think the highlight of our Christmas time, though, was our eight-hour meditation, Christmas meditation on Sunday, where we had a pause in our busy schedules to take t the time to dive deep inside and commune with Christ consciousness. So I'd like to start with a reading by Guruji Paramahansa Yoganandaji about Christmas. <clears throat> Lift your eyes and concentrate within. Behold the astral star of divine wisdom and let the wise thoughts in you follow that telescopic star to behold the Christ everywhere. <clears throat> in the land of everlasting Christmas, of festive, omnipresent Christ consciousness, you will find Jesus, Krishna, the saints of all religions, the great guru preceptors waiting to give you a divine reception of everlasting happiness. After waiting long for me through many incarnations, Christ is being born anew in me. All the boundaries of my little mind are broken that the Christ child may wake on the lap of my consciousness. Christ consciousness in me is the shepherd to lead my restless thoughts to my home of divine peace. O oh Lord, make my heart big enough to hold thee, that it throb with the Christ consciousness in everything. Then shall I enjoy the festivity of thy birth in my mind, my soul, and in oneness with every pulsing atom. Paramahansa Yoganandaji, <clears throat> he divided Christmas into two parts. He had, of course, a social Christmas where we exchange gifts, we are with family and friends. And then he also had, and, and I believe Master started this himself, um, a spiritual Christmas because he said people had lost sight of what Christmas really is what Christmas really was, the birth of an avatar into the world that brought the consciousness that all masters have, Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, Buddha consciousness, but that consciousness came again through Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago. And in fact, we say uh, our calendar is based on his birth and his passing, B.C before uh, Christ and A.D. after death. And so this time of Christmas is a real time to realize who and what Christ was and also his meaning in our lives. As I was saying, Master had a spiritual Christmas that he began many years back and he had people take day, a whole day off just before Christmas and in fact, he had Christmas, he had, um, then he had a Kriya Yoga initiation, then he had the eight hour meditation, uh, these different things uh, right at the same time. But for the long meditation, he would have people chant, pray, open their hearts to receive the consciousness of, of Jesus, of Christ. And that's a tradition now throughout all of Master's uh, places, the shrines, centers, colonies, that we take that time aside to meditate, to try to attune to the consciousness that Jesus Christ had. Um, in the West, Christmas is much more social. I think people spend a little bit of time in church, but for the most part, it's uh, gift giving, it's socializing, it's going to parties, it's putting up Christmas lights, as many things. But in the uh, teachings of Yoganandaji, he taught and spoke a lot about the inner Christ and how to go within to 
um, receive that consciousness in yourself. Paramahansa Yogananda led these long meditations, and one time he was so engrossed. Um, it's interesting to think about it before I tell you that story, but Master went to the United States. Now, he was from India, he went to the West, and you would wonder now, why would an Indian go to the West with the teachings of Jesus Christ? But Yogananda Ji himself said that Babaji, um, Jesus Christ appeared to Babaji and said, my followers are doing many good works, but they have forgotten my true, uh, the essence of my teachings, which is communion with God. So Paramahansa Yogananda, he went in 1920 to America, and he went um, with the teachings of Jesus Christ, the essence, he said, the original teachings of Jesus and the original teachings of Lord Krishna, which are in essence the same. So Paramahansa Yogananda Ji went to India, went to America from India, and he came through another door with the teachings of Jesus Christ. He came, he brought um, the teachings of inner communion, how to still the mind, how to meditate. Paramahansa Yogananda Ji brought yoga. That Vivekananda went before Master, uh, but. He stayed for some time. Yogananda Ji took up his home in America, and he lived there for four dozens and, and dozens of years. And he brought um, and taught people how to still their bodies through yoga. He taught people how to energize the body, to be able to have more energy for work, for success, for prosperity, of course, for meditation. He brought the concept of God as Divine Mother, that one could feel close to God and, and not, um, in the West, the uh, people see God as the father and the disciplinarian. But Yogananda Ji brought the concept of the Divine Mother. He brought the concept of, of, of deep inner prayer with God and talking to God and hearing God. And, um, and so in, in these ways, he brought the teachings of Jesus Christ, and he really revolutionized the churches again. He planted the seeds in those churches in America of inner communion, of, of stilling the mind, of going within. Um, it was someone from India, and, but the teachings were, the essence were, was the same of those of Jesus Christ. And so uh, one time Master was having one of these uh, Christmas meditations. If you haven't tried this, please do. It's just such a wonderful time of year. And you can feel the holiness, the sacredness of that day uh, that an avatar came to earth um, thousands, two thousand years ago. Um, but in one of the meditations, Master had a vision of the Divine Mother, of God as Mother, and he was uh, talking to her. And Swamiji Kriyanandaji was there, and he said we could hear um, one side of the conversation. We could hear what Master was saying to Divine Mother. And uh, at one point, uh, he said, oh, please don't go, please stay. And he said, oh, the material desires of these people are, are sending you away. Please, you're so beautiful. Please stay. And uh, Swamiji said the meditation was so deep that day that they didn't even have a break. They went straight through with eight hours. And so this gives us a clue that at this time of Christmas, it's a time of uh, releasing attachments and open, opening one's heart soul, mind, to uh, the consciousness of God, consciousness of Christ, the consciousness that every master, every great master had, and um, uplifting oneself to be able to receive them. Uh, it, there are many symbols around Christmas, and uh, I grew up with Christmas. It's a huge holiday in America. And I, I always thought something was missing. I didn't really 
understand it all, but it was enjoyable. As I was growing up, there was always the Christmas tree and there were the presents and um, you know, we'd get up early and unwrap the gifts and then there were all the Christmas cookies and the cakes. And, and uh, I, I always felt there was something that was lacking. But um, anyway, I enjoyed it. But later, as I came onto the path, I started understanding that there was, these were symbols that people didn't really understand. Um, one of them uh, was, uh, and these you take it or leave it as you feel, but this was my feeling about it. The whole idea of the Christmas tree is um, the, the energy in the spine or the tree of life in the spine and the lights on the tree or the lights in the chakras. And um, there was a very, very sweet story of a disciple of Guruji, uh, Durga Mata was her name. And at one of the Christmas celebrations, uh, she wasn't able to go. And uh, she talked to Master on the phone. He said, oh, I, I really wish I could be there. And I think he was up in uh, Los Angeles and she was in Encinitas and she couldn't come. And um, she said, I, I miss so much about Christmas. Master loved Christmas. I mean, he had uh, all of the outward things that people had for the this, this social Christmas. And uh, so he, she said, I, I just wish I could come. And he said, uh, don't worry, I will give you a Christmas tree. <laughs> it's so sweet. And what happened was in her meditation that night, her spine was lit and the lights uh, all were shining in the spine. And, and it's such a beautiful way to, I mean, everything that's symbolic outwardly, it's, it, there's an inner, inner reality to it. And so that's one of the things of Christmas that it's nice to think of it. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I'd like to think that it is true, that that's what the tree means. And then the, the star that the wise men saw, um, well, this is an obvious one that you can't, I mean, if there's a star here, you won't see it all the way to such a, a you know, a long journey that those, those wise men took to find the Christ child. The star means the inner star of the spiritual eye. The golden ring uh, has Yoganandaji described the spiritual eye with the, a blue field in the center and a silvery white five-pointed star in the middle of the blue. Now that's the star that the wise men uh, tuned to, to be able to intuitively know and follow and perceive where Jesus Christ, the avatar, had been born. And that inner star is something that uh, we teach and uh, Master taught and we teach in our teachings. Um, Dr. Lewis came to Yoganandaji, uh, his first meeting, and it was Christmas Eve. And he came and he asked Yoganandaji about the star. And he, uh, he had read it in the Bible where it said, if thine, it says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. Now, there are many interpretations of that, but a master can explain it. A master did explain it. And he, it was a very sweet story, Dr. Lewis. He said, I've asked many a uh, minister or acharya, we say here, what that means, and I've never gotten a satisfactory answer. And master said, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall into a ditch. And so he had Dr. Lewis sit in front of him, and uh, he had him sitting cross-legged. And Master talked to him for a little while, and then he brought his forehead to Dr. Lewis's forehead, like this. And he showed him the light there, the spiritual eye. And Dr. Lewis was completely amazed. Um, you can imagine the power of a Master just to send that vibration, magnetism so strong that it opened up Dr. Lewis's uh, third eye. He was his first disciple in America, although Master said, I don't call them my disciples, they're God's disciples. But uh, after that, then Master again showed him the other lights in the higher chakras. He showed him at the top of the head, 
the Saraswata chakra, the lights of the lights there. And Dr. Lewis describes in his book how the lights, uh, he saw bubbling lights in the top of his head and he felt completely in ecstasy and uplifted from the master, master. And so Dr. Lewis, he left there um, a completely changed person, as you can imagine. And he went home and as I said, it was Christmas Eve and uh, he was quite late uh, because he, who would want to leave that? So he was there with uh, Master and he was supposed to be home decorating the tree. So his wife was there waiting and uh, she either had a frying pan or a rolling pin and she was waiting for him at the door and all she had to do was see his face and then she just put that down and she said, just, just come, come and tell me what happened. And he explained to her, and of course she became a disciple as well. So this star that the, the wise men saw, it's an inner star. And that inner star is where we find Christ, the Christ consciousness is where we find all the masters. Um, that's where visions come. Uh, that's where we see the astral world, the causal world. Uh, there's also a, a lovely uh, story of Radhasi Janakananda, who was Guruji's uh, most advanced disciple. And he, uh, at, he always saw light in his meditations. And um, he was a very great soul, very deep. And in three years, he attained samadhi. And uh, he and Master would walk along in Encinitas lawn, holding hands, and they were both in Samadhi. And uh, when Master would walk by him with someone else, uh, if, if Rajasi were meditating out on the lawn, which he, he did often, Master would say, don't talk here, let's be quiet. We don't want to disturb him. And that's because he, was, he had so much light and so, he was so, in such deep consciousness, his vibrations were just filling the area all around and blessing everyone. And uh, so uh, Rajasi, um, I was telling you this story that he, he would always see light. And then he went through a dark night where everyone does. There are times when you're just struggling spiritually. And uh, because he was such in so much light, um, and he, that light went away, he suffered greatly. And all he could see then was just this very little speck of light. Um, but he kept meditating and he, he just kept looking at that. He couldn't see anything more, but he looked at that and he, he, he every day meditated and the light would grow. And then it got bigger and got bigger and it kept getting bigger. And then out of the light, <clears throat> one day he saw the face of Swami Sri Teswarji. It just came out of the third eye to him and he said, all is well now. And then each one of the gurus came to him through his spiritual eye. So this is where uh, we look when we seek God, when we're seeking the masters, when we seek Christ and Krishna consciousness, it's at this point at the the spiritual eye. So this is the star the wise men followed. And uh, there was a boy at Mount Washington, I think it was, a young boy. I think he was in his teens. Um, and one day he had a vision of Jesus Christ and he saw him here. And he told one of the other monks, and, and I, I don't know if the monk believed him or not, but anyway, word got to Master and after this Sunday satsang, everyone was passing by Master. He was greeting them, and, and he just tapped the little boy. He said, yes, he had a true vision of Jesus. And those visions come. You can have a flash that just that face will come. And I remember one time I, I was just waking, and I had this image come, and it was such a thrill. And I thought, uh, the first thought in my mind was of mem a memory. I said, I've seen him before. And you know, it's, it's, these are, um, when you're looking through the third eye, even when you're 
I mean, I was asleep and then I just was waking up. But as you, as you gaze here more and more, you open that uh, level of your awareness and your consciousness. And, and I believe many saints can come and masters and they just they bless you. And they help you to come through that doorway. This is the doorway to enlightenment. And they invite you in to the other realms. And so um, uh, this is something that in yoga we understand that the that star is the star of the spiritual eye. And then the giving of the gifts, of course we all love it. I love presents. It's just fun to have them. But I was thinking about that and it really is about giving uh, the gift to honor the, the soul of that spark of God that's in your friend or beloved or family member. And uh, when the wise men came, who by the way, Paramahansa Yoganandaji said that the three wise men were Babaji, Lady Mahashaya, and Swami Sri Tesvarji and that they came uh, to honor the avatar. They were all avatars, and they came to honor the avatar that had just come to Earth. So, you know, everyone felt the vibration. If you watch the different uh, movies about the life of Christ and his birth, and wherever you go, I lived in Italy for many years, and at this time, there are crash scenes of Jesus and Mary and Joseph and, you know, the scene of uh, his birth, just on almost every corner, and uh, in America as well. And, you know, it's something that everyone knows. It, it, it happened, and it was such a significant and such a deep moment. And, um, but they came uh, to honor this great avatar that had come back uh, to earth. And then an interesting thing was that Swamiji asked Yoganandaji because Master himself said that those three, uh, our masters were the three wise men. And then Swamiji asked Master, he says, Sir, were you Jesus Christ? And Master said, what difference does it make? All in waves of the same ocean, something like that. But anyway, something to meditate on, <laughs> but it did, uh, I mean, why would he go to America and to the West, and anyway, there are very, there are a lot of things we don't really understand, but um, it's interesting to meditate on these things and try to understand them from an inner level. So the giving of the gifts is to honor the, the soul um, uh, and vibration within that vibration within our friends and family and loved ones. Master came to bring the inner teachings of Jesus Christ. And those inner teachings are um, how to live one, how to go inside, first of all, and then how to live one's life um, in a, a manner that is following the teachings of Jesus, of all the great masters. Um, but, you know, the different quotes from the Bible, and I grew up with the Bible. Jesus, Jesus Christ's life is, is written about in the Holy Bible. Particularly, his life is written in the New, Test New Testament, which is the second part of the Bible, by, uh, mainly by his disciples, Luke, John, Mark, and Matthew, and they tell of all the stories that when they were with Jesus, which was not that long, three years, three and a half years that they were with him, um, all of the things that they, the teachings that he gave and what happened in his life, um, and that's what everything is founded on, is the stories of those disciples. But uh, really, there's so much misunderstanding in the churches today, Master said Jesus Christ was crucified once, but his teachings have been crucified every day for the past 2,000 years, meaning that people don't understand the essence of what he came to bring. When he talked about, uh, I just mentioned, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. Another 
a passage from the Bible, the kingdom of God is within you. Be still and know that I am God. All of these talk about inner uh, silence, inner communion. Um, and then from there, to take that into your daily life. Now I thought about this today, that Jesus Christ came for everyone. He didn't come for Himalayan yogis or people who could get away from life or uh, just monastics or just his 12 disciples. Um, he came to bring a way that everyone could live their life in attunement with God and be free from sorrow and suffering. And, but the essence of that has been lost. So people socialize and have fun and whatever. And, but if you really study his teachings and understand them, you see there's so much more there. And I have to say, I was raised in a Baptist Christian family. I mean, we had our, we went to the church all the time and basically lived there. And uh, I, we had prayers every night. Um, I didn't really understand what was going on. We had uh, baptism. We had this really big, uh, like a kind of a tank in the, in the church where you would go up and you would uh, offer yourself to Jesus. And I was just, I loved it. I mean, I didn't know what was going on, but I just loved the vibration. Everybody in my family was deeply, is, is still deeply spiritual, deeply religious. And uh, so then I remember being baptized. You know, these are all outward symbols here again. And they, you know, I was a little girl, and they would take you into this big tank, and, and you know, the minister, the acharya, would just put you down in the water and hold you down, and, and he was blessing you. And... Um, it was very moving, and uh, but I mean, what is baptism really? It's an inner baptism of meditation, of going within, of being still, of going into the kingdom of God. And uh, I have to say that I really began to understand the teachings of Jesus after being in that church for 18 years. I never understood anything tell you the truth. But I went along because I liked the vibration. And I don't. I think I didn't understand because I don't really think anybody understood. I, I, honestly, I mean, from, from the talks and the studies and oh, I just didn't, it didn't make sense. But when I came to Master and I read uh, what he wrote about the teachings of Jesus and I, I heard uh, some of his lectures that talked about Jesus, uh, I said, finally, I understand. I understand why he came. I understand his message. I understand he talked about intercommunion. Master says in autobiography that Jesus, um, he was a Kriya Yogi, that he taught Kriya Yoga. He knew Kriya Yoga. He taught Kriya Yoga to his close disciples. Uh, St. John, uh, various ones. It also says St. Paul, who came after Jesus' life, um, that he practiced Kriya. And he said Jesus knew Kriya, he practiced it, he taught it to his close disciples. So he was a yogi, and he practiced daily communion with God and taught that to others. But this is not what's practiced today. Uh, it's very outward, it's very social. Uh, and Yoganandaji came on behalf of Jesus to bring the energy back inside so people could go in again and find the living um, Christ and Christ consciousness inside of themselves. I remember um, my friend and I, uh, we had gotten out of college and uh, we, after, right after college, we wanted to. I was just headed to Master, I, I obviously, because I, I started wanting to really understand the Bible. So we would sit together um, many times, and we'd open the Bible, different passages, and, and we'd uh, study. <laughs> I put it in quotes, and so my, my friend and I, I mean, we were 
when we just graduated from college, we did, we had a brain. And, but so we'd look at, we'd look at the passage and I'd look at her and I'd say, no, no, did you understand that? And she would say, mm, I don't think so. And then, and then she said, well, did you understand? I said, no, I didn't understand either. So we said, well, let's go to another one. So we <laughs> go to another verse and I said, did you understand that? She said, I didn't understand. That was how we studied. We never understood anything. But when I came to Master, when he drew me to him, rather, I began to see with different eyes and see that what a deep teaching that Jesus had. And, and it is said that uh, Jesus uh, came to India in those missing, there's 18 missing years in his life that's just been completely taken out of the Bible. I mean, it ends at age 12, and then it starts back up at age 30. Now, something's missing there, <laughs> so it's been completely taken out. And you can um, look up The Lost Years of Jesus, a, a book that's beautifully done, and also a video. And Swamiji speaks on that video as well about what Master said about Jesus' life. But it is said uh, that Jesus spent some of that time, if not most, in India. And that he studied in India, he learned, he taught, uh, and he came back. Uh, the last three years of his life were back in Israel. But, um, and there are many, you can get online, and there are many beautiful books about uh, Saint Isa, was his name, and where he may have traveled, uh, that may, he, may have been in Varanasi, in various places. I've read several of those books, and they're very inspiring because it's not what you get from the Orthodox Church. It's like, we don't know what happened during those 18 years. He worked in his father's carpentry shop, and it just doesn't add up. But um, if you start looking, you'll find um, there are a lot of beautiful books on uh, Jesus' life. There were uh, many, uh, I was talking about the lack of understanding about Jesus, and uh, there are many uh, humorous kind of examples around that as well, that Master was once, Paramahansa Yogananji was once on a train, and a man came by, and you know, he saw his dark skin and his long hair, and I don't know, maybe he had on a, on a robe, I'm not sure, but the man was, a, I guess he was a Christian, minister. When I say minister, that means a, a preacher, an acharya. And he looked at um, Yoganandaji, what he considered this uh, person that was like a heathen. And he said, uh, do you believe in Jesus Christ and that he was the only son of God? And, and Master said, I, I believe he was a, a son of God. And the man keeps going and he finally says, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ was the only son of God, you're going to go to hell! And his face was all contorted, and, and there were all these people on the train looking, and, and Master said, well, I might get there by and by, but you're there already. <laughs> and everybody on the train laughed because you could tell. I mean, he obviously wasn't living a Christian life, a life of, as an example. He wasn't living in the example of Jesus. And uh, there was another man who came to Master who, he, uh, he said, I don't think it was that easy for him to be in America at that time because there was, I mean, people were non-believers, heavy meat eaters, they drank, heavy materialism. Master came in with vegetarianism. I mean, he, he started, uh, he made different things for this big company now, Loma Linda, like, uh, veggie hot dogs and different soy products. And we all came from, many of them came from Yoganandaji. But uh, anyway, this man came and he, and he said, everything in the Bible is, is literally true. And Yoganandaji said, no, it just can't be. There's a lot of symbolism. And the man said, no, no, it's, it's all true. And, and Master said, uh, well, what about the serpent talking to Eve? you know, of Adam and Eve. And uh, this man said, uh, well, in those days, serpents could talk. And Master laughed, and he had on a, 
as a hit on a hat. He said he took his hat off and he said, I bow to the colossal temple of ignorance that I see before me. He, he <laughs> doffed his hat and bowed before the man and then he walked off. He just couldn't believe that this guy believed that. And uh, there was another man master. Man, I mean, he met all kinds of people. This man, he had on, at the back of his chair, he wrote God, like he was God. His name was, uh, I think it was uh, Father something, but um, just totally, uh, you know, uh, outrageous, really. And then uh, there was a, a man who wrote to Yoganandaji, and he said, uh, he said, he denounced Jesus. He, he said in the letter, and he didn't write his name or phone number or his address or anything, but he said, didn't, don't you know that Jesus Christ never lived? And so Master asked Divine Mother to show him that man, and uh, he found him. It was in Boston on the east coast of the United States. And Yoganandaji, he went, uh, and he went, he, this man was in the, the Boston Public Library. And I've actually been there because I've been to the places where Master went, in, in most of America. So he, he went to the library and he saw this man and he went over and he just was stood right by him. The man was sitting, studying something. And he said, why did you write me that letter about that Jesus Christ didn't exist? And the man was so surprised, he said, how did you know I wrote you that letter? He said, Master said, the same power by which I know it was you tells me that Jesus Christ did exist. And so there were many uh, kind of humorous but also amazing stories about uh, Master's time in America around, around Jesus. And um, we were watching a beautiful story of the life of Jesus Christ called Jesus of Nazareth here. Uh, at the ashram the past couple of nights. It's, it's long, it's six hours. You need at least two nights on it, but it's just very, very, very beautifully done. And um, I was wondering during that movie, there were many miraculous things that he showed, that Jesus showed, and uh, that he did. <clears throat> and at one point he says in the movie that uh, he said, I showed these things that the people might believe. He's talking with God in his prayer. He said, I showed that they might believe. And he did many beautiful healings of people. Um, he brought uh, Lazarus. So you can, if you, you can read these stories in the Bible, but uh, he was already dead for four days and Jesus brought him back to life. Another girl who had died, he said, she's only sleeping. He brought her back to life. He, he um, changed uh, water uh, and made it into wine. And you know, I was reflecting on that, that uh, any master who's one with God, they have that power. It's, it's a part of their whole being. And Yoganandaji had that power. He, um, he said one time there was someone who had a friend of his a relative, had, of a friend had passed away and the friend had asked him to come and uh, be there or whatever. And Master went in the person was dead and everyone was lamenting and crying and, and all. And he, he just motioned them to move out of the room. And he said he put one hand at the medulla and one at the spiritual eye and he just held the person's head and uh, there was the power of God flowing through him. And then, you know, after a few minutes, the person opened their eyes and they were alive again. And that happened during Master's lifetime here in India. Another time, uh, he had, he had a, um, a place where he was producing uh, vegetable juices, different vegetables, and he'd make juices from them. And so he wanted to... Um, share these with some guests who had come, some of the carrot juice. And so he told one of the, uh, his students to go, one of the monks, in fact, to go and uh, bring back some of the carrot juice so people could sample it. So he went, the monk, and he came back and he, 
he kind of was whispering to Master that there's just not, there's much, not much left, there's only a little bit. And the Master said, just pour. And there were 10 people there, and there was enough for, I think, half of a cup or half of a glass. And he poured, and he poured, and he poured, and he poured. So everybody got some of that in all the 10 glasses. And, you know, he never, Master never said anything. Only he and that monk knew what was happening, but he had that power of God. Any master it has that. And one time, um, Guruji wanted to go out for a ride with uh, one of his disciples, um, Oliver Black. And uh, it was raining and raining and raining really hard. Anyway, he sent someone to tell Mr. Black that he'd like to take him out for a ride. And so Mr. Black looks outside and he goes, where you can't even see anything, it's raining so hard. So he put on his coat and uh, he left the room and it didn't take him but a couple of minutes. He got to the door and he goes outside and uh, it's completely, everything's dry. The driveway is dry, the car is dry, the street is dry, everything's dry and uh, he masters there and he looks at him and the sun's out and master looks at him and the disciple just couldn't believe it and he said for you Oliver and you know it's just is very very dear but uh, Jesus had worked miracles master didn't his life wasn't for miracles but it, once in a while you know when when he felt God wanted him to he showed those things to people that they might uh, have more faith. So Jesus, he was one of our, is one of our masters, one of the gurus. He brought the teachings um, that all of the masters have, have brought, which is meditation, going within, being still, being in the silence, communing with God. And the time of Christmas is the time to try to um, get to that level as best as we can, uh, particularly doing, during the meditation, the long meditation. And during the whole season, you can feel there's such wonderful vibrations. Try to get to the level of openness so that we can receive the consciousness, uh, heightened consciousness and perception that Jesus Christ had, that Yoganandaji, that all of our masters um, had. And that's why they came. He was born to bring that anew to everyone. He didn't come for us to just adore him. He came for us to realize that we have that consciousness within ourselves. So I'd like to close this evening with um, uh, an affirmation uh, from Metaphysical Meditations and then a brief reading. <clears throat> I'll read the affirmation first and then we'll do it together. This is on Christ, uh, receiving the Christ consciousness. I'll read it one time. I shall be a son of God, even as Jesus was, by receiving God fully through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. Now I'll read it phrase by phrase, and you can repeat after me out loud, more and more quietly, and then we'll do it silently. I shall be a son of God. I shall be a son of God. Even as Jesus was. Even as Jesus was. By receiving God fully. By receiving God fully. Through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. Through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. I shall be a son of God. I shall be a son of God. Even as Jesus was. Even as Jesus was. By receiving God fully. By receiving God fully. Through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. Through my sacred I shall be a son of God, even as Jesus was, by receiving God fully through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. I shall be a son of God, even as Jesus was, by receiving God fully through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. I shall be a son of God, even as Jesus was, by receiving
receiving God fully through my sacred meditation expanded consciousness. Now silently, I shall be a son of God, even as Jesus was, by receiving God fully through my sacred meditation expanded Autobiography of a Yogi on Jesus Christ. Master says, Babaji is saying to Lahiri Mahashaya, the Kriya Yoga which I am giving to the world through you in this 19th century is a revival of the same science which Krishna gave millenniums ago to Arjuna and which was later known to Patanjali and to Christ, St. John, St. Paul, and other disciples. St. Paul knew Kriya Yoga, or a technique very similar to it, by which he could switch life currents to and from the senses. He was therefore able to say, Verily, I protest by our rejoicing which I have in Christ, I die daily. By daily withdrawing his bodily life force, he united it by yoga union with the rejoicing eternal bliss of the Christ consciousness. Om Shanti. Joy to you, and again, Happy Christmas.